UK financial services firms are storing critical customer information and content on average across nine different systems. Additionally, 80% of respondents in Nuxio's research indicate that their information systems aren't also integrated. Not only does this have a significant impact on operational efficiency, it also negatively impacts customer experiences as well. Joining me today to talk about this topic is Chris McLaughlin, Noxio Chief Marketing Officer and Chief Product Officer. He guides the company's global product and go-to-market strategy and is responsible for all aspects of marketing, product design, and product management worldwide. Now, I'll be back uh, periodically throughout this webcast and we'll lead some questions later, but for now, I will leave you all in Chris's capable hands. The floor is yours, Chris. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for the kind introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are all staying healthy and safe during this time. Uh, and thank you uh, for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, as Alex mentioned, we're going to spend some time today talking about your customer experience and modern information, and particularly looking at some trends in financial services, as well as our experience with different customers in financial services. Now, we have a lot of ground to cover today, so I'm going to move pretty quickly, and hopefully, if I leave gaps, we can address those during questions at the end. Uh, but I am going to start talking about some common information management challenges and how those exp impact your customer experience. Uh, we'll do a quick primer on modern information management, how we can address some of those challenges. And I think most importantly, dig into artificial intelligence, machine learning, talk a little bit about how new technologies are really helping some of our customers to address these challenges. And then I think the key piece here, tie it all together with a couple of customer case studies, talk about how some very large banking organizations in Europe, customers of ours, are addressing these challenges and making progress from a customer experience standpoint, as well as in terms of kind of modernizing how they manage information. Now, we're going to have a couple of polls as we go through. Hopefully, Alex and I will have a little bit of time to interact during the course of the presentation as well, too. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to dive right in here uh, and talk about some modern CX challenges and financial services. Now, for most of you, this is probably a bit of a review, right? And we are talking about the age of experience nowadays. So really transitioning in financial services from focuses just on efficiency and delivery of products to where, you know, that delivery of products really has to happen in the context of a broader customer journey, in the context of a broader customer experience. And if you're on this webinar, I'm sure you are actively thinking about your customer experience. One of the key things here is you're in good company, right? Uh, looked at some key surveys around customer experience. You know, uh, four out of five top 50 banks are now pledged to some sort of customer experience transformation as a key business objective. Uh, if you look at the impact of customer experience, you know, in terms of lifetime profitability of a satisfied customer, most organizations organizations estimate that between five and eight times uh, greater lifetime profitability between a satisfied customer and a dissatisfied or disinterested or disengaged customer in the organization. So big benefits from an experience standpoint. Uh, one of the stats that I pulled out that I thought was particularly interesting, if you think about customer experience and you think about kind of how we engage with customers in a modern age, look at the results that FinTech startup Revolut generated with literally no advertising. It's pure word of mouth based on the experience they offer to customers. Their first 2 million customers came from word of mouth engagement, came from social engagement. The other thing I pulled out of the survey is we start thinking about challenges around customer experience. Uh, really, really interesting. And this came out of an e-consultancy survey that Adobe sponsors every year around digital trends. But, you know, there's a big disconnect between how organizations think their mobile experience is for customers and how customers think about that same mobile experience. So here you see uh, literally 25%, one in four respondents thought that the mobile experience their financial services organization offered was good as compared with 60, 70% of the financial services organizations themselves when surveyed. Now, when we think about challenges to customer experience, two of the key things that kind of come out have to do with data and limitations of technologies. And we'll talk a bit about that today. But if you see from a survey respondent standpoint, one, difficulty in accessing data, key 
key barrier to customer experience, and then two, limitations in current technology in terms of how we engage with customers, also a key barrier to customer experience. Literally four out of 10 respondents in both cases uh, responded as key challenges here. The last piece, and we don't talk about this enough, particularly nowadays from a customer experience standpoint, but we need to think also about compliance, and compliance and customer experience don't necessarily go hand to hand uh, in most people's minds, but if you think about GDPR, and certainly in the United States, new legislation like the California Consumer Privacy Act, um, what we're looking at is compliance mandates that have to do with customer information, and that request for you know, transparency around what information you have and perhaps even the removal of that information becomes a critical aspect of your overall customer experience. So we have to think not only about the customer journey, but also about how we engage with compliance mandates around our customers. Now, one of the things that's really interesting to me, and we kind of looked earlier, and Alex touched on some of these results from this survey earlier in his intro, we looked earlier about data access and access across systems as being challenges, and yet what we haven't really looked at is the challenges that organizations have with that. So one, as Alex referenced, right, we conducted a survey back in November, UK financial services organizations. First and foremost, eight out of 10 respondents, literally four out of five is depicted here, 80%, uh, indicate that their systems aren't fully connected with one another. They also indicated that on average, they have nine different solutions that manage customer information in their environment. So we have lots of different systems. They're not fully connected together. The natural outcome for that is that their employees spend an inordinate amount of time looking for information. So on average amongst our survey respondents, literally 52 minutes a day, time spent looking for information. That's one hour out of an eight hour day, about 15% productivity impact, simply because we can't find information. If you think about information as critical to that customer experience, that time spent looking for information not only impacts efficiency in an organization, but significantly impacts the customer experience. Now, as I talked about earlier, we're also going to talk a little bit about AI today, not just from the standpoint of automating and streamlining activities, but also from the standpoint of really unlocking information and making it more accessible to employees, to customers, to other people who need it to really impact that customer experience. So the other thing that we surveyed on was kind of the potential of AI, and clearly, the vast majority of our respondents see the potential of AI not only to automate but to impact that customer experience, but also have concerns about their organization's ability to work with these technologies to really uh, deliver the outcomes that they want from a customer experience and efficiency standpoint. So for me, the punchline for today and really what we're going to focus on moving forward, simple truth. Outdated information management strategies, this lack of access to information, information siloed across the organizations, inability to work efficiently with information are really negatively impacting customer experience for organizations. We'll talk more about those challenges, and we'll talk more about what customers are doing to address those challenges. But Alex, I think this brings us to our first poll question. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, great opening start to the presentation there. So uh, we're going to get you guys, the audience, involved in things. Uh, we put up a we're going to put up a polling question on your screen right now. Uh, the question is, uh, which of the following do you consider to be uh, significant obstacles to your organization's experience management efforts? Now there's quite a few there, so uh, feel free to mark all that apply. I'll go through them. You've got uh, techn technology limitations. Uh, lack of funding, lack of clear strategy, conflict across internal organizations, uh, other competing priorities, a lack of leadership, a lack of critical skills, poor data management, misaligned incentives and rewards, poor integration across systems, lack of executive commitment, and unclear return on investment. I'm going to give everyone a few moments to make sure they filled it in, uh, just in case you were away from the computer as doing the washing up or dealing with children or pets, as is the way when everyone's working from home. Uh, perhaps, Chris, is, is there one, Chris, that you think there that might turn up that turn up with the largest uh, representation? Oh, good Lord. Uh, usually what we see is conflict across internal organizations as being a major, major point of challenge. Uh, obviously, 
particularly in, in banking organizations, lots of different silos, not just from an information standpoint, but also just from a business process standpoint and how they engage with customers. Excellent. Okay, well, I'll give everyone just uh, five more seconds to mark down what they their answers are. Okay, three, two, one. We're going to move across to the results. Okay, there we go. Wow, it's a, a fairly even spread, but some big representation there for, for poor data management and lack of clear strategy, uh, and also uh, big numbers there for an unclear return on investment and technology limitations. What, what, what's your initial reaction to those results there, Chris? Well, other than the fact I was completely wrong in my uh, prediction along the lines of conflict <laughs> in across internal organizations, uh, not surprised from a data management and integration standpoint. As a matter of fact, um, looked at uh, 2020 results of a similar survey, uh, and so, particularly for the UK, 31% uh, larger audience uh, separate from this uh, talked about technology limitations, 24% poor data management, and 20% uh, poor integration across systems. So, very, very consistent there. Uh, if you look at the US audience, uh, that technology limitation stack goes up to 51%. Um, so, one of the things that we find, Alex, with organizations is that the more they get into CX as a source of competitive differentiation as a critical business objective, the more they begin to understand some of the challenges and limitations they have with current systems, current access to data, and integration across different systems. Fantastic. Well, uh, at that point, I'm going to step back into the background and, and I'll let you continue on with your presentation. Fantastic. All right. Let me see if I can navigate off here. Good. Um, simple, simple slide here, and I'm going to just build this out so we don't get caught with the animation. Um, I really like this. came from McKinsey and Company, and you see lots of very complex slides about customer journeys and mapping journeys and things like that. But when we think about financial services and we think about kind of the different ways that we engage with customers across their life cycle, this is just a very simple representation of the customer journey. So we talk about onboarding new customers, uh, transacting with them, mm -hmm. excuse me, administering uh, their, their different uh, points of interaction, uh, routine uh, communication, things of that nature. And then finally, we think about that experience uh, related to resolving customer uh, issues, and that becomes very, very important for many organizations. And what I like to use this slide for is really an illustration of the importance of information across these different steps in the customer life cycle. So we think about information from the standpoint of, you know, how we have documentation related to the launch of new products and services, how we offer personalized uh, services, products to different customers. And you're going to see here, I talk a lot about streamlining and automation, but from an onboarding standpoint, what we see a lot with our customers is just the volume of, of content and information that transform, uh, transfers back and forth from organizations to customers, whether that's forms and applications, product information, proof of identity, credit, collateral information. The bottom line here is at every step of the customer journey, what we see is a need for information, a need to be efficient in the way that we interact with different forms of content and information that impact these different steps in the customer journey. And in particular, and I'll kind of focus in on the last step because it kind of ties all this together. When we think about the resolution of customer issues, first and foremost, you know, obviously key point of focus for our customers is self-service. How do we enable a mobile experience? How do we enable customers to self-service so they don't necessarily need to get to that customer service representative, that call center, but when they do, critical outcome here, and I kind of highlighted it, see what the customer sees, giving them visibility across all the correspondence, perhaps call transcripts, SMS messages, email communications, chat, even social media today becomes critically, critically important. So kind of bringing that all together, yes, you have different information and content types at different points in the customer journey, but ultimately to provide effective customer experience, particularly when you're resolving issues, it's all about access to information. Other things that we see here, seamless transitioning between channels. In interactions with customers may begin from a mobile standpoint, but then need to go quickly to online or even face-to-face -face or 
call center driven interactions. And clearly anywhere that we can bring automation and efficiency becomes very, very important. So if I distill this down, it's about anytime, anywhere access to information, seamlessly transitioning between channels and being as efficient and automated as possible in dealing with information in your organization. And that's really what we're gonna focus on for the balance of the presentation. I'm gonna pick the pace up here a little bit. But when we think about information challenges that are impacting customer experience, first, lots of new types of information that customers are dealing with. And that information exists in a variety of different silos. And by the way, the number of silos in your organization isn't decreasing, it's increasing. And that's just the impact of modern technology. We also think about automation, new insights into your business, and how we begin to extract critical information and data out of all of the content and information that exists in your organization. And then finally, because we are dealing with new requirements like GDPR, we've got to think also about privacy, compliance, perhaps even data locality, data residency requirements for your organization. So let's dive right in very quickly from a content standpoint and information standpoint. This is a lot of what we deal with as an organization every day. If you think about content management previously, it was all about documents, it was all about scanned images, and it was all really about moving this mundane information throughout your organization. But what we see now from a modern content management, modern information management standpoint, is the diversity of content has literally exploded. So now, not only are we dealing with electronic documents, scanned images, things of that nature, but we are also dealing with interactive forms. We're dealing with social media content. We're dealing with SMS uh, and text messages, email messages, all of which plays a critical role in your customer experience, and all of which needs to be managed, easily accessible, easily findable inside your organization. The other impact, right? One, we've got to think about specific tools to work with this information, but two, we've got to think about volume and scale. We literally have a customer in the US now top 10 PNC uh, insurer, and they're thinking about the modern claims process. And you think about modern claims, you gotta think about things like video and images. So they have to manage new content types as part of that. But they're also thinking about their customer experience. And part of that is capturing every email, every SMS message, perhaps every chat and social engagement they have with the customer. So we not only have a diverse set of information we have to deal with, but the volume is incredible. This organization over their first 20 years captured about 10 billion objects, a very, very big set of information they manage about their customers. But looking forward, they anticipate capturing about 5 billion new objects more every single year. So literally in two years, doubling the amount of content it took them 20 years to generate. And as they move forward, certainly dealing with tens of billions of different aspects of information about their customers. So think about that from a customer experience standpoint. Think about that from a compliance standpoint. Just the volume and diversity of information we have to manage is growing exponentially. Two, think about silos in your organization. Now, a lot of people in a place we get started with a lot of customers has to do with legacy systems, legacy information management. You think about your file nets, your documentums, your IBM technologies, open text, things that create content silos, information silos in your organization. So a lot of people kind of said, and if we go back 10, 15 years ago, hey, let's put all of that in one place. The reality is we found that that was a very difficult to do, very expensive to do, and very, very complex process. B, what we're also seeing nowadays is those silos aren't going away. We're not even consolidating legacy systems, but now we have a variety of new systems. So whether you use Salesforce for customer engagement, Salesforce has kind of its own content management capabilities. A lot of our customers use technologies like Box or Dropbox or things like Slack to share content and information in their organizations. Those create more silos for information in your organization. If you're a Microsoft customer, you may have SharePoint. Uh, certainly you have different email uh, platforms in your organization. The reality is your content silos are multiplying and you have to have a different approach than just saying, hey, let's grab it all and stick it in one place. So what we look at here is really thinking about content and information as an enterprise service, right? We have enterprise services for data. We've thought about master data management inside of an organization, but what we haven't thought about in terms of really bridging these silos 
is kind of having a master content management approach in these organizations. So simple diagram here, I won't deal with too much detail, but what we really look at here is how can we begin to connect these different silos in the organization? And then over time, think about consolidating that information. But the key to connecting these different silos is not just to plug into them, we also have to think about the data associated with this information. So kind of establishing a master metadata later associated with all the different content that exists in your organization. And then having this common enterprise service that allows me to serve information when, where, and uh, how it is needed by an end customer or by an employee. That means supporting mobile use cases, customer service, self-service use cases, it certainly means delivering content. If we think about claims processing, loan origination, other processes in the organization, serving content in the context of the work that users are performing, and then really beginning to develop purpose-built content and case management applications to bring greater automation, greater efficiency to the organization. So one of the challenges that we see from an enterprise service perspective is really around how do we establish a common point, common set of data about information and environment. And you say data, what do you mean data? So when we think about intelligent content management, we start thinking about the role that data plays in helping you to find content in your organization. You'll see my thing here about information equals data plus content. Now, what I don't mean here is data in a database plus content in a content management repository. What I really mean is how we transform content into valuable information for an organization has everything to do with the data that we have about that content. If you think about new content types like images or video, they have no text inside of them. So we have to apply data to them to make that information findable. You even think about traditional text-based documents, scanned images, things of that nature, we need data to help us efficiently find and deliver that information. So for us, content and data, and data is what makes content readily accessible. It what helps us contextualize content so that we can deliver it as part of a work process. It's what makes that information available anytime, anywhere to any consumer. And you think about your customer service, self-service use cases there. And it's data that also helps us to govern and make sure that content is secure. So data plays a critical, critical role. Alex, I'm gonna pause here and let us go to our second poll question, if you wanna jump in. Sure, of course. Thanks very much, Chris. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be uh, lining up our next audience poll. Uh, it should be appearing on your screens shortly. Uh, we're going to ask you to tell us your thoughts on whether your organization currently uses AI or machine learning technologies. And if not, if you plan to deploy them or not. So there's three options here. Yes, we use artificial intelligence or machine learning today. Uh, no, but we plan to deploy uh, AI or ML in the next year or so. And no, uh, we have no plans to deploy AI or ML in the immediate future. Uh, I'm just going to give you a few more seconds to uh, get, go over those options. I'll read them again. Uh, yes, we use AI ML today. No, but we plan to deploy AI or ML in the next year. And no, uh, we have no plans to deploy AI ML in the future. For me, uh, I, for my two cents, as someone who reports on on it fairly regularly, I I think I'm gonna, we're going to see a big amount of response from the second option. But what about you, Chris? Uh, yeah. Number two is usually the top one. Uh, if you look at leading uh, CX organizations, uh, typically you get a balance between one, two, and three, 33, 33, 33. Uh, but certainly as you move further out and people who are just beginning to think about their customer experience journey, we start getting more in the second category. I'm always surprised when we see responses in the third category. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's see what everyone's got. We'll leave around for a few more seconds to get those answers in. And we're going to move across now. Okay, wow. Okay, so uh, it was my turn to be off the mark there. 40% uh, use AI or ML today. 35% say they don't use it today, but they plan to use it in the near future, next year or beyond. And a uh, quarter say they have uh, no plans to deploy AI, AI or ML in the immediate future. Um, does, that, does that scan correctly for you, Chris? Yep, I, I think that's pretty consistent. In fact, this group seems to be a little bit ahead what we typically see, which is fantastic in terms of 40% adoption on AI ML. 
Excellent. Well, uh, congratulations, everyone in the audience, for being ahead of the curve. Uh, I will uh, step back again, let, let Chris continue on with this presentation. I'll see you all again at the, the tail end. Off you go, Chris. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, a little bit about artificial intelligence, and in particular, machine learning. Uh, huge, huge fan of the technology, and when we talk about automation and we talk about machine learning, we really see three key areas of benefit. One, we talked earlier about data, and we see just a huge correlation between machine learning and how we can generate more data, more accurate data about content through extracting information using machine learning. We also see opportunities for automation. I'm gonna give you some examples here of how we can really leverage AI to bring more intelligence and automation uh, to your business and particularly how you work with data and content in your environment. And then finally, kind of a cool use case on the edge uh, where one of our customers is using a, you know, what I would really describe as a content lake to deliver more insight into their property and casualty business. So let's quickly go through this. First and foremost, when we talk about AI, a lot of customers in machine learning uh, really think about public cloud services. So if you look at uh, whether it's Google, Amazon, Microsoft, or even specialty providers like Site Engines, there are lots of commodity machine learning models available out there. People use them for OCR, ICR, uh, sentiment analysis, translation, transcription, even facial celebrity recognition, certainly for some of our digital asset management customers. And when you think about these kind of services, really what I do is hand content off to the service and I get data back from the services I've kind of illustrated in the middle of the slide here. Sometimes we stack these technologies. So I might scan uh, an existing image, OCR, ICR, and then I might uh, perform sentiment analysis on it or transcription or translation depending on, so you, these services don't have to be used standalone necessarily. And really what you're looking for here is a standard approach to plug into these services and be able to uh, leverage them inside your organization. We have lots of customers who are doing back file conversions on existing uh, scanned images, and they're using OCR, ICR technologies, perhaps Amazon Textract is a good example, to help them with that conversion to get more intelligence and data about uh, existing information inside their organization. The only thing with these public cloud services I like to tell customers about, beware of the law of large numbers. A lot of our customers are dealing with hundreds of millions of objects, and even at fractions of a penny per uh, page per image, some of these uh, services begin to add up very, very quickly. The other thing we see with commodity services and these generic cloud services, we tend to get generic cloud data. Great example here, and I just use an accident claim as an illustration. I love this because number one, it shows you the power of the technology. So I actually took this image, loaded it up into Google's Cloud Vision API. You can access it online if you're curious about putting your own image in there. And then you can see on the right, these are the data values I got back. Okay, so look, great. I've got a completely non-textual image here. I've loaded it into a machine learning service and I've gotten values back. And you can see some pretty, pretty interesting values here, right? I've identified a sport utility vehicle. I see that it's a Chevrolet Tahoe on the left. I see it's a van on the right. And I even see that the location of an accident appears to be in a parking area. I also get a lot of values that aren't really helpful to me from a business context, bumper, tire, uh, for example. It also has identified that there's a registration plate, but it hasn't told me anything about that vehicle registration plate. I'm sorry, this is a US example, so you'll see it's a US license plate. But the other thing we like to talk to customers about is the ability to build your own machine learning models. This is a great example of some work we're doing with customers today to kind of automate the ingestion of claims information into their environment. So what we're able to do with custom machine learning models is get much more specific values. So I can identify the brand of vehicle, I can identify the model of vehicle, I can map all this information to specific data fields, and as you can see here, I can even perform an extraction on the vehicle license plate. So identify it's from the state of Illinois, I identify the license number, I even get a partial number off of the other vehicle. All critical information from an accident standpoint. And as a further example, and perhaps you can't see it from the image, but there's actually a picture of the vehicle operator here. And with the right custom models and perhaps information from driver's license uh, information, I can even do a facial match against existing images I have inside my organization. So a great example of how I can begin to extract data. Now we talked earlier about 
silos in your organization. One of the biggest challenges we see in bridging silos is that every single one of them has its own data model. And there's not consistency in the type of information that we have. So as we start to plug things together in an organization, one of the real benefits we see from an AI standpoint is to begin to normalize this information and build out a master metadata model that makes it much, much easier for us to extract and find information in this environment. Get consistency in the way that people search for things so that, for example, if I'm responding to GDPR, I can quickly find all the applicable customer information based on a subject action request from a client. Automation, great example here. This is some work that we are also doing for a property and casualty insurer, a different one in the United States, around forms automation. Okay? Simple, simple example, but this is for policy issuance uh, and new customer onboarding. So customers submit forms. Their biggest challenge today is figuring out if the form's been completed correctly before they begin processing it. So with AI, I can look at the form. I can quickly identify what form it is. I can then determine, has it been completed correctly? Does it have all the signatures in the right place? And if not, I can kick off an intelligent exception process and go directly back to the customer, either through email in an automated fashion or with a customer service representative. But if you think about that from a customer experience standpoint, I can have that form submitted in any way, shape, or form. If it's not done correctly, and by the way, this customer still deals with about 60% of their information in the form of paper forms and handwritten responses. So very, very critical work, efficiency issue for them, but also a customer experience issue for them. Once I figured out that it is correct, then I can quickly push that on for forms processing, do the appropriate data extraction, and move to the next step in the business process. So automation, and customer experience combined together here. Very, very simple use case. Now, as I'm talking about this, a lot of our customers say, hey, I've got uh, mailroom technology, I can scan, I can do ICR on forms. Certainly true, but what we're finding for many of our customers today is that the real challenge that they have is these forms are no longer coming in through the mailroom. They're coming in through various digital sources, email, getting SMS into the organization, they need the ability to have an enterprise service that helps them do this processing extraction and intelligently deal with this information. The other thing I said I talked about was insights in the organization. Very quickly on this one, because I thought this was a really cool artificial intelligence machine learning use case that one of our property and casualty insurer customers in the United States was working on. You think here about an accident claim, about the photos and information you get from accident claims. One of the critical challenges that they had identified is that in many cases, fraudulent claims utilize the same or similar versions of photos as part of the claims. It's actually interesting. If you go online and look for accident claim photos like I used in that previous example, there aren't that many available. So what they have found is across thousands of claims adjusters and claims processors in their organization, the opportunity for one claims processor to get the same set of photos and identify a duplicate set of photos in a fraudulent claim is very, very low. But one of the things that we can use artificial intelligence for and machine learning here is to identify duplicate photos, duplicate sets of photos, or potential fraudulent claims in that process. So first step in the process they wanted to do, build a large collection, based on their existing claims documentation, photos, videos, and other images submitted as part of this process, be able to identify whether we have a potential fraudulent claim and kick that into an exception process. The second thing they wanted to do, and this is where it gets really interesting from a new insight standpoint, is utilize this content lake, this collection of information that they have about accidents to bring greater intelligence to their damage estimating process. So what they would do here is take photos, be able to identify similar photos, similar make, similar model, similar set of damage, and then be able to access data that they have about previous damage estimates, previous damage associated with those claims to quickly and in an automated fashion come up with a damage estimate associated with that claim. Now that gives them lots of opportunities from a customer experience standpoint. Instead of perhaps going out to a claims adjudicator who has to go out and look at the accident, they can very quickly look at that damage estimate, perhaps even push it out to a repair network, get estimates back against those photos of damage, and then quickly in an automated fashion process that claim, push it back to the customer 
with an approved set of repair shops that they can begin interfacing with. The key point here is an organization that's looking to use existing information in an entirely new way in their organization, and machine learning allows them to do that. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting I have builds on those slides. So bottom line for us from an AI and machine learning standpoint, the power that we see here is, look, we can talk about extraction, we can talk about automation, and even new insights for your business. We can even look further out. You know, the real power for us from an AI standpoint really has to do with understanding content and data as well as a knowledgeable human, but the scalability of it, be able to address this information at massive scale in your organization. We can use these insights to more predictively deliver information, perhaps to knowledge workers. We can begin to understand the usage and importance of information, not just based on what's in the document, but how the document is used in your organization. And certainly, as we've shown from a fraud standpoint, we can recognize patterns, we can recognize connections between information, and we can even identify outlying data points. Foundationally here, it's really all about the data and information you have in your organization, and with the right set of foundational content and data, we can train models for you to do some really interesting things. Now, this last point I'm going to move along very quickly on, and it just has to do with compliance. We touched earlier on GDPR, CCPA in California and the United States uh, as mandates that have to do with data access, data privacy, and really being able to represent to a consumer what information you have about them. The other aspect of this, and it's true both in the United States and in Europe from a GDPR standpoint, is not only do we have to be able to represent back to a customer very quickly and easy what information we have about them, but two, they have the right to be forgotten, to request that we re delete this information in the organization. I've been talking to a lot of customers about this lately because being able to search across multiple disconnected systems and then quickly respond to a customer and think about the customer experience aspect there, but also the data management access is a huge, huge challenge for them and they're throwing bodies at it today because their systems aren't plugged together. There is a downside to GDPR, certainly also for CCPA, which is modeled on GDPR in terms of serious fines associated with this. And we're now getting to the point with these regulations where there is real teeth behind the regulation. One of the key challenges that we see here, we talk about silos, a lot of our customers struggle with legacy systems here. And in particular, they struggle with legacy print stream systems. So if your organization has technologies like Content Manager On Demand, CMOD, or Mobius, and you're using print streams to generate large volumes of customer communications, we're talking about correspondence, but we're also talking about things like EOBs, statements, billings, things that get produced literally millions and millions at a time. A lot of these are getting generated off the mainframes. They're generated by old products with outdated arch architectures. It's very difficult to get this information and present it on different mobile form factors for customers who want to engage in self-service. They're difficult to integrate to other systems. These technologies are very expensive to operate and maintain. They are not designed for the cloud, and many of our customers have a massive uh, impetus to move to the cloud right now. So this is a big challenge for them that a lot of their customer information is stuck on premises. It's stuck in a mainframe. It's very expensive and now is creating challenges for them from a compliance standpoint. So we talked earlier about bridging across silos. This is a great example for us. And the nice part here is because this is data generated content, uh, and it starts out as data, the ability for us to take it out of these old environments, move it into a cloud environment, and perhaps even transform it based on customer requirements becomes very, very important. So great example here from a CCM standpoint where we're able to reach into these old systems, move this into a modern uh, cloud-based platform. We can even transform this information into PDF uh, files if we need to, which are obviously much easier to deliver from a mobile standpoint. But if you want to keep the original source AFP or Metacode based uh, file format, we can also support that as well. But the key thing is we're getting that information in one place. We're making it much easier for you to find it. We're taking cost out of the organization and uh, we are enabling you to be much, much more compliant. Cool thing here when we talk about legacy technologies and kind of underneath all of this is that a lot of these 
can really just addressing some of these legacy environments can help you improve your customer experience, be more responsive from a compliance standpoint, but in many cases, they pay for themselves. Uh, the beauty of this is that customers are being overcharged for this, and uh, as a result, the real benefit is, is that they can very quickly fund significant improvements from a compliance and CX standpoint by simply addressing some of the challenges in their legacy environments. Now, very, very quickly, and then we'll go to questions. Uh, let's talk about a couple of examples, and I'll focus in on this one. I put a second one in here that, that was much more uh, focused on just consolidating information together, but I really like this one because it illustrates kind of a very intelligent approach that we see. Now, I didn't name the customer here, but they are uh, a very large uh, global bank. They also happen to be a Spanish bank whose name may begin with S. Uh, and we engage with them in the UK, so this is a UK specific uh, use case, around a legacy system replacement. Now, the critical thing here is they literally had seven different uh, IBM systems here, many of which were running uh, a content manager on demand, CMOD. So great illustration of how we need to replace a legacy system, lots of documents that we need to move from one environment to another, about two point two and a half billion, so very large system. Uh, and first goal for them was to begin to seamlessly integrate uh, into their existing customer service system. So the challenge was information siloed. What they wanna be able to do is expose that to their Salesforce system, establish one single point of access for content and customer related information that they can then serve into their customer experience environment. Challenges, and this is one of the first customers where we saw GDPR as a real opportunity for them in terms of consolidating these different systems. Certainly, they had numerous silos in their organization. And, and what was really interesting to us here is they had really begun down a path of building their own homegrown solution, realized that they could accomplish a lot of their goals from a cloud and modern technology standpoint without necessarily having to build it themselves the way that we had architected our solution for them. And they could support their future growth goals uh, in their organization. Now, what I like most about this use case as an example is one, I talked earlier, substantial cost reduction. They were able to fund uh, this investment in new technology by cost savings from replacing all of their legacy systems consolidating this environment. So cost savings improves CX. But two, really illustrates their thinking and some of the points we made earlier in the presentation, right? They were able to quickly and easily deliver a new mobile application for personalized statement delivery. Moved off of CMOD, moved into our environment, introduced a brand new mobile app for personalized sta uh, statement delivery in their environment, were able to plug into their customer service platform, in this case, Salesforce, and third piece here, subject action requests, GDPR. Uh, two things. One, we give them access to all that customer information. And two, with our workflow capabilities, we're helping to manage that subject action request process so that we are making it, making sure that they are quickly and efficiently responding to GDPR inquiries in their organization. But what I like most about this case study and the reason I focused on this particular one is that what they were really looking to do was lay the foundation for future digital transformation in their organization. Recognize they couldn't get there with their legacy technologies. They were really setting up that enterprise service that I talked about earlier that would enable ongoing digital transformation and really put them in a position to support kind of an agile DevOps approach to building out new solutions, new content-centric applications in their environment uh, to really support uh, their future digital transformation goals. And with that, Alex, I think I've gone a little bit over time, so I thought I would skip straight to the kind of Q&A discussion portion of the presentation, if that's all right with you.